Oops. Well, that wasn't as expected. What's up, guys? Okay, so, um, <laughs> kind of like the last video, I had a game plan of something I was going to do for you guys. And then, um, yeah, it's cold. So, hey, Dan, actually, you gave me the ideal for this um, live feed. You said you're curious what I end up coming up with for the uh, bollard and the uh, winch combo. So, um, like I said last time, here is the old setup. This used to bolt to the uh, back side of the bollard. And the winch was attached to this. What's up, Greg? Um, and so this ended up bending. And I think it's because I took this part out. It helped with the rope. Jared, what's up, buddy? Um, so, yeah, when we ended up using it, it ended up bending right in this area. This bottom section bent outward. So, yeah, it not a not a great design. It was really quick and easy to set up, but it, uh, what's up, Nick? How are we doing, buddy? Um, it really extended the system and made it really big. Okay, so um, also uh, the other thing I'm going to do is show my gro my GoPro mounts for my helmet. I kind of rudely didn't answer Josh Man yesterday, so I really hope Josh Man kind of shows up here at some point. And I can rectify the fact that I didn't answer you back yesterday. He was curious of how I mount my GoPro mounts on my helmet. And uh, so I'll show all that. And kind of show some of the mounting systems that I use. And the multiple kind of variations that I can get from it too. So um, first the thing with the bollard. It's too damn cold for me to be sitting outside and messing with this bollard. So... I totally said, no, I'm not doing that. Um, so what I did is I went out, I got this bald cypress log, brought it in, slapped it up on the table, threw my back out, and now we'll use it to do the demonstration and hopefully show the bollard setup. So um, let's see if I can pull this bit of a table out here. How's everybody been? Is it cold where you're at too? I just fuff 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 freezing here. Okay. So that's pretty on. Everything shrinks in the cold. Just ask me. Ah! Ah ha! Oh no. Yeah, I tried that with one of my bars that didn't work, Nick. It didn't work. Um, so, I'm just going to set this up. To tell you guys the honest to God's truth, I've never, I have yet to set this bollard up since I've done it. So, this could not work at all. Who knows? Um, just got froze out of the tree. Dang. Right on. Yeah, it's cold, man. It's, it's really, really, well, who was that, Michael? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's cold, Mike. It really is. It's miserable out there. So, um... Let's see. How do I want to do this? Bear with me a bit here. This is not going to be the prettiest, fastest thing you've ever seen. Um, normally, when I do this, I use this. Uh, I have a little camouflage. Um, it's a little camo looking um, strap here and I use it because it's it's like a hell of a lot smaller a little easier to mess with and stuff so usually when I hook up the bollard the first thing is um, basically just setting that first strap and getting it kind of snug so you can slip the bollard up underneath and get it to hold so that's usually the first step. 
ease up like that. Usually get it like somewhat snug. And then uh, here's the ball. I'll show you guys like up close kind of what everything looks like and how it came out. If I'm being honest, I'm not sure that this is going to hold up. This bollard is really, really heavy. So there's a chance that this may just kind of fall here. We'll see. Hopefully not. So usually we're just going to fight that burst strip or the hooks up underneath it. This is awkward because I'm trying not to uh, knock the log over. At the same time, so wiggle that up through. Like I said, usually I use a lot smaller of a uh, strap for this part, and uh, like you can see, it's wiggling all over the place right now. So, uh, dang, my hands are cold. Probably should have put some gloves on. So, set up there. Huh. Get one more click out of that. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if you can totally see that or not. Yeah, you can see that pretty close. If anybody knew you? Pulling rain here. I'd rather have the snow. Jared, I would not. I'm I'm done with the snow and the cold. I really am. Um so now, the main strap to the bollard design that Greg has here is, um, is really this one. And there's actually two little prongs, or like, uh, not prongs, but two holes on the back side of the bollard here. That, um, there's one here, and then one here on this side. And makes it really easy to hook this part of the bollard up, you just set those in there, pull the other one around, make sure you got enough room. I should have left myself enough room to kind of walk around in here, but I didn't. Okay, so take the other one. Sometimes you don't want to get that top one too tight because. Then you can give yourself trouble trying to get this one in, like I just did. But, when I added this new winch set up on here, um, I was afraid that I was actually going to be in the way of how this thing mounts. So, let's see here how it sets up now. There's snow on the underneath of this thing, so it's really it's just sliding all over the place. But, okay. That's basically... How the system will go from now on it'll hook up like that my only concern is this being a bending point so um let's see nice uh, the same one. okay uh nice on this one that looks good yeah dan it came out pretty good this is a normal mount right here for uh, the winch, which is the same kind of mounting bracket that I had attached to this, which kind of used to sit in the middle. Um, it made it really long, so that was kind of not what I was looking for. What's up, Francisco? How are we doing, buddy? I'm going to move you guys close to this so you can kind of see it. Then I'll put you back on the charger because I don't have very much charge on my phone as it is. Okay, so, now, um, right here, you see this little groove? There's a little groove that I cut out here. So, the actual rope goes up in there, and it's going to want to pull to the side here. So, that hook should keep it in place. It's just the width, basically, of the rope. So, it'll keep it in the place as it tries to to work its way over here as we go up and hook things up and start to pull so um, I think you know as far as the setup for the system 
I think this is going to be much... Ah, dang it. Knock my phone out. Um, I think this is just going to be better. So, it's it's out here, away, in front. Um, it's still like the same width as the entire system, you know? So, it's not a bunch of hangover to each side, so the ropes coming down should be good. Um, and it's really simple of a setup. If you look, there's a bolt here and a bolt here. This bracket here is to prevent, if it does try to bend up, this bracket that I welded in here, it's got a bit of space for some flex, but it should stop any actual, like, bending of this, this part here up. So, at least, you know, sorry for the, uh, two pots of coffee, shaky hand, brief, but, but yeah. A guy could weld an eye bolt. Hang on. Sorry, guys. Let me set this back up. Sorry. Um, let me see. What that, let me see. Okay. Uh oh. Are we froze? No? Okay. Might weld some chicken British fire. What do you mean, Greg? What kind of braces? Oh, on like this part, maybe down to hold it into place? Or like from there to there or something? I just, I don't want to do put anything else on it because I, I don't want it to be difficult to put the rope and get wraps and everything on it. There's plenty of room and space up in here to to maneuver the ropes, be able to hook them and lock them here and here. So, um, I'm just concerned with the flex. I think the only thing I could think of to kind of prevent that flex would be to take like a strap like this and put it here and run, also run another ratchet strap that kind of secures this actual part and put it basically right underneath this strap around and it kind of ratchet strap, hook it there and there. And then this stuff, you know, is cushiony. So it should be able to take the impact on them bolts and stuff. But, yeah, I think that will prevent, if I know that what we're doing is heavy duty, that should prevent any actual, you know, bending or anything of it. So I think the placement is going to be good. I don't know if I like that little hook that I put in it. I may end up cutting that off. Because I don't want it to wear on my rope. Or I may just do it a little wider. But like I said, I haven't haven't used this thing at all. And just got it set up last night. So um, Dan was asking me. He was curious. Or not, not asking, but he said kind of curious what I end up coming up with and that's that's what I come up with guys wonder if a guy could weld an eye bolt there for a fair lead open it up a bit put the rope yeah um the only thing is if you look here with it being the same width I don't really need I, I just know that this sticks out a little bit this way so it is going to pull the rope usually I keep it aligned my ropes aligned pretty good with uh, x-rings so I know that this is going to be working at an angle. But the best part about that is that this is so in the same width pattern of it that it'll use this, the bollard, to actually brace itself a bit. So, it, But it'll be kind of out towards the tip. But yeah, that's, that's what I came up with, guys. Um, nothing real fancy. It's held on with a couple bolts. I may weld this bracket to this bracket. Just to secure it a little more, but um, yeah, that's not not gonna do a whole bunch more to it, I don't think. This similar feel is a stein, yeah, yeah, it does. Um, that's kind of I think that's the the perfect setup. I think you know I kind of take a little bit of ideals from what they did, and then me, I'm just what I have a, available at that time 
is going to determine kind of way it comes out and what I do. So those few brackets are what I had. Um, I needed it to stay kind of as small as possible. So that's just it's just what I came up with. It's probably not the best setup, but it should do for what I need. Need to set you a fire setup. Yeah, definitely do. I have a, a little heater that's underneath this table here. But, uh, yeah, it's not doing too good. It's, it's pretty damn cold. A little wood stove in there would keep it nice and toasty. Yeah, I've been thinking about doing a, a video and making one out of a tank. Like an old air tank or something and welding it up. So, maybe that's something we'll end up... Dang it, I brought my phone over here to put it to the charger and now it's about to go dead um so yeah i'm gonna i'll set one up eventually i just haven't found the tank or anything yet fucking got a little wood stove set up in his yeah yeah that's perfect too dan how you doing buddy I like your videos man keep up the good work you got some good stuff thanks dan i appreciate it hey jeff guys um anybody got a chance to see jeff's giveaway acts that they did on um august channel this morning that was really cool that was i like that i didn't have a chance to watch it yesterday so i had to wait till this morning to check it out but yeah dude the axes are are amazing jeff makes some really 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 nice axes so and you can tell he likes doing it so i dig that too um yeah i i just that that's gonna be the setup it's nothing special but uh I think that it's going to work for what I need done. And um, it's not overkill in any way, which is usually one of my issues is if I build something, I overbuild it. and It's too big and gaudy. And that's, that's not. That's, that's going to work and uh, do what I need. So I really like this synthetic rope. Um, when we had the cable that was in this, I hated it because it stayed wound up. So it was like a spring and you'd have to stretch it. And it, you know, when you try to hook it up, you'd have way too much out because you, it was all sprung, but you need, so switching out this synthetic there was, a, uh, was, was awesome. It saved me a bunch of time when I'm messing with that thing. So, okay. Now. Thank you. Blake Fry. How you doing, Blake? Hi. What's working straight? On uh, the bollard there? Um, I don't know. I'm, I Personally, I just, I know we're over, it needs to be over a thousand. So, as long as it's over a thousand, I'll be good with it. If, if it's not, then I will be bracing everything up and probably cubing this. So that it is stronger um, with some angle iron and filling it in and bracing it all together to reinsure it and make sure that we get that thousand pound mark. So that's what I'm looking for when I use it. So that's I, I, I want a thousand pounds pulling power, you know, and if something was to break loose, I need it to be able to hold a thousand too. So that's what we're going for, boys. Um the other thing I needed to do was for Josh Man. So, not sure if Josh Man will watch this video, but when I get a chance, I'll message him and refer him to this. He was curious how I mount my cameras on my helmet for my GoPros. So, um, that's mainly for Lolly. Yeah, it's this. Um, usually for me, I'm I'm looking to pre-tension. Uh, my lines or create a little bit of lift um, you know when you have a branch that's like right on the house here and you want to bring it up um, that's really the only purpose for it it's not a huge lifting device that we're going to lift a whole tree or anything like that I'm looking to gain uh, maximum pre-tensioning or to get a little lift so it's uh, definitely not a GRCS yeah yeah, it definitely needs to be able to, to get some lift, Dan. If if not, it's kind of pointless and just an eyesore sitting in front of the bollard. 
the bollard itself is amazing and i mean i could set up a five to one to pre-tension and stuff but i really have it all compact like this real easy for him to throw a prussic rope up on there hook it on and just get to cranking and get it super tight and or create a little lift so Yeah, that's basically what it is, Blake. It's just, just a homemade version of it. And uh, the bollard I have beat to hell. And we've put some crazy, you know, forces and weight and, and logs and stuff on it. I know that it's as strong as it gets. This setup that I had, I had it on this. And it bent to hell. So this one I know is a lot stronger. So. Now, to my GoPro setup. Um, I used to wear a cask, um, helmet, but not too long ago I switched to this Proto, which is, um, real nice. In the, uh, winter time with these Protos, they have a vented system here. Um, say it's summertime, you can see the daylight through there. You can leave this vent open. Winter time, when it's cold, you want to close that. So, I just realized that I've been freezing to death and I left it open. So, yeah, it helps to get a little bit of a little bit of breathing, you know, going on on your head. Yeah, we'll go with like a HBCRS, Hillbilly Controlled Rigging System. That's what we'll call it. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so either, Greg. I don't think, you know, because we've... we've beat the hell out of that thing and it hasn't put a scratch on it, it hasn't yeah it's it's very 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 well made casks are so heavy and hot yeah i agree um i just i have a i have a big ass head i mean that's just the bottom line i have a big ass head so it, i feel like my casks was i would wear it and i looked like i was like wearing a yarmulke you know on top of my head I didn't feel like it covered even my whole head because I have such a big ass head. So I was kind of excited to uh, switch over to the uh, to the Proto. I was stoked to finally get it, and it is so incredibly comfortable. It there's no comparison. The ability to take your earmuffs off and then tuck them, pop them out, and then tuck them back in there is just so awesome. Um, they're incredibly comfortable. Their lock system for the back is just a simple flapper there. Um, everything can be adjusted out. And they do come with the glasses set up. You can have the glasses. I think I may get them. Um, or I may switch to see if I can find the hard, solid, clear plastic one. And maybe have something done to it. Or, I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah, Greg, there's not, uh, this is the only hard hat I've ever found that's actually fit all around my head, and I felt like I wasn't wearing the improper size. Like, I, I felt very awkward when I wore my, my, uh, but I mean, I did like my cask if I had the, the earmuffs on, and it clipped and everything, I, I've never been one to be able to handle the chin strap. It, like, bugs me, and I feel like I want to gag. Don't ask me why. I don't know why it is. It should not bug me that much. But it drives me nuts. And I know I'm supposed to clip that little thing, but... As long as I have my earmuffs on, there's not a chance. I can turn upside down. I've done backflips out of trees. And my helmet doesn't fall off. So, I feel like as long as I got my earmuffs on, I'm good. Um... It was a side point. We're supposed to be talking about like GoPro mounts, and I'm just talking shit on the chin strap, which I shouldn't do. Yeah, yeah, I guess you should wear it, but I can't. I cannot do it. My next hard hat, right on, Dan. Yeah, you should definitely give it a go. They're very, very, very comfortable, and it's just I feel like my whole head is protected. Where when I was wearing the cask, I felt like the backside of my neck and that danger zone right back here on your spine, I felt like it was wide open for to get hit. And I feel like this, not so much. It's just, I feel so much more protected. I've been nailed in the head with stuff when while wearing this, and nothing. 
like I'm like wow okay everything kind of stayed together my cask I would get hit and it would push the cask out of the way and like hit me in the head sometimes so that's the, the the stability of it wearing it and having it on your head it's definitely I, I feel like the uh, helmet is well worth the buy so you should uh, maybe give it a whirl if you haven't but yeah it's it, they're a good helmet getting off the tail have a good one oh right on Blake hey thanks for stopping in buddy stay safe and uh, we'll catch you on the next one or something I started out with a cask and went to a Protos last year, and I don't think I will go back. Yeah, me either. I, I put my cask on not too long ago for a few minutes, and I just, uh, just, oh. I don't know how I ever wore it. and I loved it when I had it, you know, because I moved up from wearing a steel hard hat that was just a regular, pretty much plain Jane, and then I moved to it, and then I moved to this, and I don't think I could go back to any of them, so. All right, now, GoPro mount. I guess the only way to properly show you would be to use the actual mount and set it up. Um, as far as mounts, I bought this one. This is the one that I originally had. This is metal because I bought like three of these little plastic ones and they broke every single time. Um, so I bought this metal one and, ah, and not too long ago we lost the back plate. It fell. And it has like this little magnet makes it click in. But this thing is so awesome. And I'm so bummed about it. But it took like three weeks to order it from like Japan or something. But it's really, really nice. It also came with this really cool little tool that undoes GoPro um, stuff. So like um, okay. you have your GoPro knobs. It either fits over it like this as a wrench or it actually this piece goes into it as a wrench and it undoes it um, this is a swivel mount it actually turns uh, 360 so that I feel like was a must when I got this um, and then on top of that I run, okay, I run a side mount, and I run a somewhat of a top mount. So, my side mount is way back here. So, the way that I, they're both pretty much on the side. I don't really have an up top one. So, this one here, I'll usually, the way this is designed, I'll want this up towards the top. So, I'll go ahead and click in here, and this will give me my pretty much my top view if I wanted it. But um, a lot of times when I record, I'll, if you notice these, um, these, like, GoPro things actually have, like, different holes on them. So, where your camera would fit in here on this one, that's the reason I use this for my helmet cam. I can actually put it in upside down or that way and then run it from the, like, a side view. So same thing you know you run it straight up and it's running your top view this tilts so other than that i run the other side which is the one that i actually prefer i think most of the time now this one over here i'll get like a slide in like this and then i'll normally run my camera off the side like this instead of trying to get it up here you know or pointed down I'll run it off the side and then if you notice these they have holes in them so you can hit your record button from any direction if you want to flip it and do it from the side you know you can you can do that but yeah that gives me my side view and then you know I can turn it in if I need be out um, it's not real complicated as far as my helmet setup goes. The issue and the reason that these are so far back is because when you lift the cat or the helmet lid up, if you notice, it goes all the way back to where the mounts are at. So that's one thing I had to remember as I was doing these mounts is that 
I needed to be able to flip my lid open without it hitting anything so go over there um, I also have this mount that I'll usually clip on the trees this comes with one of these and I really I recommend these and these work perfect for like on your helmet um, they come with this clip here but mine I lost the screw out of like this part so now this thing's kind of junk and I can't get the screw to go back into the mount so I use I use all this stuff here on um, on my helmet too so like if I wanted to get an over the top view I would take like take this out and leave this here um, go over here to my helmet mount pop this part off so, you know, the most important thing is that I have that 360 degree spin down here. So, if I was to, like, switch to the hero or something. Um, take this mount. I'd spin it in here. And then, it'll give me a much different view with these extensions that have been put on. That is either way out here, which is kind of, I've used a few times it's really kind of a cool view or you know it can be way up here but you know you have the full spin so it can be put the addition of buying these little bracket pieces they come in handy and it gives you a lot of variety so I would recommend any guy definitely this 360 uh, swivel piece because it gives you a lot of of you know free range and choice you know you can give your top view you could spin all the way out here give that view you could be back you know I've put it way back here before and then you know up high so it gives you know almost a view like you're looking from a you know over the shoulder which if you think wearing a hard hat with just a helmet cam on it is awkward start putting stuff like this on there and trying to walk around in the tree i've been looked at very funny before by uh by customers but um it's all in the sake of good good content so i can justify it even if it looks silly as hell sometimes hopefully you kind of got what i was talking about yeah i like the swivel too yeah jared it's it's a really 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 nice tool um that's why I bought all these other ones here is because originally I couldn't get the actual swivel. So that's why I bought um, the clip because I could use the gooseneck off of the clip. And it usually had a little thing I could clip it in here and, and you know this thing bends and spins and does everything I need. So at first I thought you know I got this but then... I started using this for like a clip up into the tree with this and it I, I just ended up liking it because I could clip it anywhere real quick and spin it around so I started using this for the in the tree with a uh, like a hero black six and it works really good um, but these little pieces when you have enough of these here like this you get so many uh, bending points that you almost get somewhat of a 360 because you get flex here, you get flex here, here, and there. So the, any little attachment you can get just gives you another choice, you know, and, and you have eventually after you make enough videos, it's almost like just the changing of an angle can make an entire video look and feel different. So, you know, oh, I hate this thing. Ugh. Yeah, so, you know, change change the angle real quick and it changes the entire video. So, I would recommend anybody that's, that's making videos, especially if you're making them on the regular, it starts to get to where if you go back and 
watch your stuff. It's like you're making the same video over and over and over. Not that that's a bad thing, but sometimes you got to have a little bit of change, especially when you have to watch that hours and hours of footage trying to edit stuff. So, yeah, snowing here in about 15 degrees. Oh, Steve, how you been, buddy? You sound freezing, just like me. And, uh, let's see. I'm Adam in Southern Ontario. I do like that setup. Yeah, it's, it works for me. You know, it kind of gives me a bunch of varieties. I definitely have to go buy a new, um, gooseneck. It's almost a must. Another clip would be nice. These clips are really cool because if you look here, they actually clip on to, um, like say you're clipped onto a little branch. There's a strap in there that you take and you hit this and that little strap in there tightens down on the branch. So like you could get it on a little bitty branch like this and get it real tight and secure. So these things are awesome. I would definitely recommend one. I used to live in this. Yeah. What program do you like for editing? Um, uh, Dave, I use, um, I use Viva Video. I tell you what I've been thinking about doing is doing a step-by-step -step video showing how I edit a YouTube video. How I go from... I, I we've done so many tree videos, so I'm not looking to to do a tree video, but I want to from the point of having footage on a GoPro and picking them up and turning that into a full fledged video. I want to do a video showing every step, like me on the GoPro, me taking it and putting it over onto my phone, because um, you know you have to set up your Wi-Fi. The way I do it personally is I run the Wi-Fi off of the GoPro to my phone, then I save, I, I, I get all the clips, save them to the program, then I switch uh, the GoPro program, then I save them over to my phone, then I take them from my phone gallery and then put them in an editing uh, app, Viva Video, then edit them together, then upload that. To my gallery then I have to take it from my gallery and put it onto YouTube and then from YouTube I run over to my studios and make sure all the settings are right and put the thumbnail and stuff in it's a process and I can understand why anybody who isn't real tech savvy would have a lot of trouble with it there's easier ways to do it. You can download the whole video, put the whole video up if you want to. If you don't want to do an edited, you know, clip by clip video. But if everybody would be interested in something like that, I would definitely do a video showing every step of how to make a YouTube video. Because I think a lot of people could get some use out of that. Um, I know Scoop just did one. And showed his way of doing it. I can honestly say his way is quite a bit different than mine. By, by actually quite a bit. So I think I probably do it the most simplified like simpleton version. His his is, is more you know complicated and technical than mine. Mine is very simple. Um, I think I may pay four dollars or let's say ten dollars a year for my editor and that's it everything else and that's the reason I pay the ten dollars is so that I can take their watermark off of it because if not they keep their watermark on the uh, videos and all my videos would say Viva Video on them or which isn't a bad thing but you know I guess they haven't done me any favors and made anything easy they they change their stuff up sometimes, but as far as an editor and being it, an easy editor to use, that's it. And I could kind of tell there are certain things that you can do with a video to make it seem more complete and technical, like transitions between clip to clip. Um, 
when you upload a clip and then you go to your next clip, you don't want it to just go skip, 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 skip. And you want it, you want them to fade. So there's transitions that you can pick between the clips to transition to where it goes black or let's say it fades white or it just dissolves or there's a shadow version. And most of my videos are shadow versions so it easily fades one out into the next. So that the clip to clip process isn't so abrasive every time. That's hard to watch. Um, messing with the speeds and stuff of, of certain clips that you want to slow down so that you can show certain things. Then going back and putting text over it or audio. Um, there's a lot to it. But if you guys are interested, I'd definitely be interested in doing a... A simplified version of how I come up with a YouTube video and and what I do to get there so Dave I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give that I'll, I'll definitely do it I, I don't think it's gonna be all that hard I think I can do it pretty easy um, I've kind of got the idea set up so uh, maybe I can get into it and we can do it soon I've been up there Oh, Steve, no, man. Dude, I'm sorry. Well, I hope you and your family are doing all right, man. Especially if you got any kids. I know it's hard on kids, so. Um, we'll be praying for you here, that's, that's for sure. I hate to hear that, man. I don't know. You're a stronger man than me. Makes me get choked up thinking about something like that. Ah. I'm glad to hear you think... Um, if, I hope she's in a better place, man. That's all we all can hope. You know, I think... Uh, I'm, I spend every waking second trying to be that nice guy and do everything the right way. Because I've been told in the afterlife it'll it'll pay off or you know in your next life it'll pay off so um, yeah I strongly believe you know the good go places that are good so <sighs> my heart goes out to you buddy I hate hearing that Right on, Steve. Well, I'll definitely I'll do that because I think the the technology aspect and the the you know tech savvy part of it, it scares a lot of people off from wanting to even try. It's very simple. It's not. I'm not a tech savvy. I'm not a wizard when it comes to social media. I'm a straight hillbilly. If I can do it, it's it's pretty simple. And I taught myself how to do it, so it's. It could definitely, it's not that hard. It's, but if somebody can give you a few pointers, it just gives you that confidence when you go into it to start. And uh, to anybody that, that does a video, <coughs> nobody's amazing at first. Like, my first videos were, were horrible. I'm so glad that I've made enough of them that YouTube is starting to push them videos. I think they've been put away, and I hope they never come back. Because I have some old videos that are so bad. They're so bad. But I was learning. And uh, the whole process along the way and the learning process was fun. I mean, so I recommend anybody. I think anybody should get into it and give it a shot. And, uh, and then have some content or something to look back at later on in life. That, you know, I know I'm not going to have the longest career, but... It'd be nice to reminisce and go back and watch when you when you had your shit together, you know, when you were when you were killing it. Um, at least that's what I hope, you know. Hopefully, it cushions the uh, the blow of hey, you're old and you can't do it no more, because that can't be too far away, you know.
not after the accident and stuff. I just feel my body feels like hell anymore when I work. So, like, just got home. Fruit got some big oaks, right on. We'll be our. We just been freezing apparently. Everybody has it uh, hanging out. We uh, at the beginning of the video, I went over this that I just put together. It's uh, my bollard with the uh, winch, and I just went over how how I set it up. For anybody that watched the last few videos, in the video the bollard messed up, broke, and or the uh, winch messed up. The bollard will never mess up, probably. But so yeah, I had to uh, come up with that, and then we just went over some GoPro talk and GoPro mounts, and nothing special. Hopefully, the work day was fun for you. I love my Echo Twenty Five Eleven custom. Oh my God, great for pruning. Yeah, I think a lot of guys um, are amazed when they finally get to try one of those or try the Steel 150. The You don't think it would be a useful tool, but the ability to have something light and agile in your hands in some, in some situations where you're, in a, you're out on a dead branch or you're at the very tip top, you want to be able to cut and get rid of this little light chainsaw. And that block of a 201 or 200 to throw it off the side sometimes is just too much. But yeah, the, the, the insane power in such a compact little tool is, I agree. I agree. I think they're awesome. Well, Steve, we're going to pray for you and the kids. And man, if you need anything, don't hesitate to ask, buddy. The owner of my company just got diagnosed with cancer. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh... I'll be that guy that just kills over one day. I, I won't go to the doctor. I don't want to know. So... Uh, that's tough stuff. I I think... I, I, I question the... Um, do would I ever want to know that kind of thing? I know they can do some amazing things nowadays, and it's probably stupid on my part to say that I wouldn't go, but I probably won't. I probably just let life do its thing with me. I'm gonna be a good dude my entire life and just hope life pays me back the same. We'll see. But hey, doctors freak me out. I just can't do it. Thanks, Bjart. Yeah, Dan, I, I use my 150 for... Love my 150, definitely the power. Yeah, um... I use that 150 to do so many big-ass removals that would blow people's minds. Because, I mean, even when I got it and was originally... Originally got it. I didn't know anybody else that had one. Mike sent it to me and I just used it and as I would do removals, I had people that would tell me that's not a 150. You can't use the 150. Yes, you can. Those quarter inch chains, those Pico chains, they cut through quicker because they're making a smaller channel and they're they're nice. I mean, you're not cutting such a big chunk out. It's easier. It feels nicer in the hand. The 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 cut is smoother. It's easier on the wrist. It's, it's a lot of it. You know, a big tooth is going to hit and it's going to, you're going to feel it in your wrist as you're using it in those 200s and 201s. But that, having that Pico chain, it, they just shrunk it down. It's not taking such a big channel out each time. So I think they should make a, a Pico chain for any saw, especially if you're using it for milling. Like an Alaskan mill, I think the they should make them for bigger chainsaws so that it takes out a smaller channel, and you get to you know you get more 
more board feet out of if you're using an Alaskan mill because you know you use a a 660 it's taking out quite a channel every time that you cut a board you're wasting a lot of wood so yeah I think it's something they should get into so, Yeah, I think my back maybe may have issues for the rest of my life now. Like I, I feel it in the evening. So, and this cold weather has really got me to where I'm hurting and like where my leg connects to like my hips is kind of jacked up still. But hey, I, I'm I'm done complaining. I I feel a thousand times better than I ever did, and that I expected I would. So I should shut up while I'm ahead. I think it'd be a true climber to see the next one. Well, hey, I hope so. That would be that would be awesome, you know. That that would be awesome. I don't think I can do anything else. So I feel like I'm a pretty good dad. I'm a decent husband, but I'm a good tree guy. So. That's about all I got. And I can make a YouTube video here and there. But, uh, I don't know, Buck and Billy Ray or August Haneke. But I do enjoy creating. And tree work gives me my adrenaline rush. But it's definitely not creating. It's, it can be with, with pruning sometimes and stuff like that. But it's not all that fun. It's more destruction or dismantling so YouTube gets me that creative outlet to where I can create a, something a content and get that out of my system so guys I'm just gonna do a short video this went way 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 longer than it was supposed to I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna hop off here let me give you one last look at the uh, bollard close up and uh, I will catch you guys here soon. Won't be long. I'll do another video. But, uh, let's see. This, I don't know about this new. Stinking tripod. Yeah, definitely nothing special, but it should work for me. Catch you guys later. Be good and uh, stay safe. Next time.